Well, as Thursday's episode ended last week, Pastor John, you had just begun to talk to us about the joy of learning. Uh, we'll never understand your model for lifelong learning or for education if we leave the affections and the emotions out of the equation. I mean, it just won't make sense. And this explains why the words joy and feeling, uh, terms of emotion and affection, are terms that we see all over your older book titled Think, The Life of the Mind and the Love of God. In that book, in Think, you mentioned those two terms, joy and feeling, 110 times, closely linking proper thinking with proper feeling. That book, Think, is 12 and a half years old now, so I was eager to see how often you use those terms of joy and feeling uh, in this new book. And they dominate even more. Uh, The words joy and feeling appear 357 times in your Mm -hmm. new book, Foundations for Lifelong Learning, Education in Serious Joy. Uh, Those two terms, joy and feeling, are all over this new book to the point that you make this claim explicitly, quote, some people think that emotions are marginal in the task of education. We regard them as essential, end quote. Unpack this. What essential role does joy and feeling play in Bible learning Mm. and in all of our learning? This is so important. So, so important for understanding the nature of true education. Mm. When I try to help people understand what we are doing at Bethlehem College and Seminary or in my life, I regularly mention these Six habits of mind and heart that we're trying to build into the lives of our students or that I'm trying to build into my own life. Both college students and seminary students and everybody else who will listen, we don't think education is mainly the imparting of information Mm -hmm. or mainly the training in a technical skill, but mainly... The, it's the formation of a mature disciple of Christ who can go on learning for a lifetime of wisdom and wonder in whatever vocation God calls them. So when I'm trying to help folks understand what we do, I mention these six habits, observation, understanding, evaluation, feeling, alarm bells go off, application, expression. And the, the order is really important. It makes a huge difference because these habits are governed by a Christ-exalting, God-centered, Bible-saturated worldview. So first we observe accurately. We're honest people. Then we understand truly what we've, under, what we've observed. Then we evaluate fairly on the basis of accurate observation and true understanding. Then we feel appropriately. Then in all the ways of wisdom, we apply what we have observed and understood and evaluated and felt, and then we give expression with our mouth and in writing in compelling ways that glorify God and bring blessing to people. And what I find is that it's the fourth habit of mind and heart that puzzles people, causes them to have a question mark on their face. And it's the one that you're asking about, feeling, namely joy or feeling or whatever appropriate emotions should arise as one is observing and understanding and evaluating. So we observe, we understand, we evaluate, and then I say, we feel. We feel appropriately. And people wonder, really? Really? I mean, one of your six aims of a college education or a seminary education is feeling? And and the answer is a resounding and unashamed yes. I mean, when all is said and done in education, this may be the one habit of mind that distinguishes true education from artificial intelligence. At one level, computers observe, understand, evaluate, apply, express, but no computer will ever love or hate 
or admire or hope or rejoice or sympathize, no matter what emotional words the computer speaks out, doesn't matter what they say, it's not going to happen. These are distinctively human acts of the God-created image of God's soul, and they are all important in the Bible. The number one commandment in the Bible is not know the Lord your God, but love the Lord your God with all your heart, all of it, all your heart. And Paul said, let those who do not have love for the Lord be anathema. He said that the whole Old Testament was written that we might have hope, an emotion, hope. Over and over we are commanded to rejoice in the Lord, to serve the Lord with gladness. We are commanded to weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who rejoice. We're commanded to be tender-hearted, tender-hearted. That's not a thought. It's a feeling. And to feel compassion, these are not optional. They're not peripheral in the Bible. They are essential to being a whole human being, an educated human being, to being a Christian. Nobody is saved by thinking true thoughts about God or even believing true things about God. The devil believes more true things about God than we do because he knows more than we know about God. But he hates them all. He hates these things about God that he knows. He hates them. That's a feeling. He hates them. That's the main issue in life. It's the main issue. It's not a peripheral issue. It's not what he thinks that's the problem. He feels all the wrong things. That what, that's what makes him the devil. And shall we neglect in education the very thing that sets us apart from the demons? Hmm. The very thing that fulfills the great commandment, shall we neglect it? The very thing that shows we're not mere walking computers. We are humans created in the image of God. So, yes. Yes, 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 we seek to build into our own lives and the lives of our students and our APJ listeners right now the habits of observing accurately, understanding truly, evaluating fairly, and I wish I could scream it from the housetops, feeling appropriately, Hmm. and then applying wisely and expressing compellingly. And when we say feeling appropriately, we mean there are healthy, mature, and virtuous emotions in response to different realities. And there are unhealthy, immature, and evil emotions in responding to different realities. It's evil, evil to rejoice over the spreading of a lie. It's a sign of mental unhealth not to feel empathy for a fellow Christian languishing in prison for his faith. It's a sign of emotional immaturity to giggle at a slip-up in a public communication. This is the real stuff of education. Knowledge is good. Knowledge is necessary. Love is better. A critical mind is a gift. A well-formed soul with deep and virtuous emotions is a greater gift. C.S. Lewis, we love Lewis, wrote about education in The Abolition of Man. Alan Jacobs, in his biography of Lewis, sums up Lewis's point in The Abolition of Man like this. Quote, Lewis passionately believed that education is not about providing information so much as cultivating habits of the heart, producing men with chests, as he put it in his book, The Abolition of Man. That is, so here's his explanation of men with chests, people who not only think as they should, but respond as they should instinctively and emotionally. Hmm. 
to the challenges and blessings the world offers them. To which I say, exactly, exactly. Education aims at right thinking about the world and right emotional responses to the world. Now, of course, once we say that and believe that, we are launched into the massive question of what makes a feeling virtuous. This is why secular colleges and universities cannot state the aims of their education the way we do. Hmm. They cannot say that their aim is to build into their students' lives the habit of forming virtuous feelings because there's no consensus in the universities about what makes a feeling virtuous. Hmm. Say a feeling about sex outside marriage a feeling about trying to change your sex, a feeling about uh, killing unborn children, a feeling about certain economic strategies, feelings about Jesus Christ and the way of salvation. They have no way that they can agree on what is a virtuous feeling in response to those massive realities, which is a, a tragedy when you think about it, that our kids are being educated in institutions that cannot state their goals hmm. that way. The, the fact that in this new book, Foundations of Lifelong Learning, I include an entire chapter on the lifelong educational goal of appropriate feelings, virtuous feelings, that only makes sense. The existence of that chapter only makes sense because I believe in radically Christian, Bible-saturated, Christ-exalting education. This podcast, that book, Bethlehem College and Seminary, all of this, all my life aims at cultivating the mental and emotional habit of experiencing virtuous feelings. A virtuous feeling in response to an accurately observed, rightly understood, truly evaluated object is a glorious thing. A virtuous feeling is a glorious thing. A virtuous feeling is an authentic overflow of the good treasure of the heart of faith. A virtuous feeling is shaped and intensified and limited by the fruit of the Holy Spirit. A virtuous feeling is an expression of love to God and people, even when it is hatred of evil. A virtuous feeling is a Christ-exalting feeling. We are not well-educated people until we can respond to reality in healthy, mature, virtuous, appropriate ways as we feel appropriately. That will include abhorrence of what is evil, Romans 12, 9. It will include sympathy for the suffering, Romans 12, 15. It will include fear of any hint of unbelief rising in my heart, Romans eleven twenty. It will include overflowing joy in response to the gospel of the grace of God, 2 Corinthians 8, verse 2. That's why the subtitle of the new book is education in serious, serious joy. Joy will be the dominant feeling for the Christian in this life, but in a world like ours, it will be serious, even sorrowful joy. Yeah, education exists for virtuous feeling. Christ-exalting education, this podcast, the new book, Bethlehem College and Seminary, all of this, all my life, aims at cultivating the mental and emotional habit of experiencing virtuous feeling, a virtuous feeling in response to an accurately observed, rightly understood, truly evaluated object. End quote. That is a mouthful, but that's a game changer as well when it comes to considering schools and academic options for education for yourself or for your um, for your young adult. Thank you, Pastor John. And thanks for joining us today. If you want to ask Pastor John, type out your question as briefly as possible, please, and email it to me at askpastorjohn at desiringgod.org. 
Well, our episode up next on Thursday lands on a national holiday for us here in the States, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is Thursday, but Thanksgiving is for all of us all the time. And we return with a fitting question uh, from a listener on Romans 121 and how our Godward Thanksgiving or lack of Godward Thanksgiving shapes the entire trajectory of our lives. Paul makes this claim in Romans 1. So how is the story of your life told by your thanksgiving? We'll find out Thursday. We'll see you then.